folks welcome to another edition of the cold hard truth thank you guys so much for tuning in this evening um it has been an interesting day is an understatement so we are going to jump directly into this hopefully everybody can hear me loud and clear i'm just going to do a quick mic check um for people on facebook just to double check because they always seem to have a little bit of an issue so let me just confirm. Hopefully every yeah, good to go. So um, listen, crazy day for sure. The Cayman Islands, there's no other way to say this, has its first confirmed case of the coronavirus. We had a press conference um, this afternoon. The government sponsored a press conference after um 4 30 4 45 thereabouts basically indicating that um they've got uh, an italian a 68 year old italian man who has been quarantined at health city and it's now confirmed that um he's the island's first Okay, so as you guys recall, we got confirmation a couple days ago that, um, let me just adjust this camera just a little bit for Facebook people. For some reason, my head's chopped off. Uh, we got confirmation that um, there were six cases that were being sent off for testing purposes. And initially it was five, then they changed it to six an additional case was added. And so we've got four negatives, one positive, which is a 68 year old Italian man, and number six, which was just sent off. There's no confirmation as yet on the results of that. So um, from earlier in the day, we kept getting rumors and you guys know how this go. You know, we've heard you've got several cases, um, first, people were saying two cases, and then the rumors started to get a little bit more concrete. Yeah, thank you so much, IG people. Um, almost 200 people, 195 people tuned in. Facebook is still beating you guys. Facebook is over 224 people tuned in. So everybody's here for it. I really appreciate the support. We're going to talk about that in a little bit as well, because some of you have really gone to bat for Cayman Mall Road, and it's heartfelt. And I appreciate it. And I want to play a voice note that someone just sent me. Um, but let's, again, get back to the story here. So um, what we're looking at is this 68-year-old being our first confirmed case. He came in on a cruise ship. 
Um, I can't remember the name of the cruise ship, but I think it was actually one of the princess ships. And I, I think it may be one of the ships that we actually turned away, but I'm going to double check that. I can't remember off the top of my head, so don't quote me on that, but I'm definitely going to double check that. This is definitely a record for Instagram. You guys are here for it tonight. That's for sure. Um, so the first thing I want to say is everybody needs to remain calm. Like at this point, we don't want to panic because that's not going to help us. We do have obviously this one case. Yes, that's concerning, but I don't want to be the voice of, you know, illogical thought and encouraging people to not do the right thing. So we all have a responsibility and a role to play in this process now. For many of you, I get that I am your voice. Those of you who know who I am, you know what I stand for. Sometimes I do get emotive, I get passionate because, you know, at the end of the day, this is my country. I love my country. I've given up residency elsewhere in the world because I think Cayman is the best place in the world. And I want to fight for that. I want to fight to maintain that best place in the world status. And, you know, we all have a role to play. So here at Cayman Mall Road, you know, we have in the past two and a half years tried to establish what our role will be. And we have become a voice that, you know, some people don't like. Like I said, you've always got a choice. But at the end of the day, there are people who comprehend and understand and understood the vision from day one. Not everybody did, but a lot of people have since um, come on board. And so I really do appreciate all of the love and support that you guys have been sending out. So here's the thing. The guy came in, and this is very, very interesting, because I want to remind you guys of the chain of events. So on March the... Um, Second, we posted on Facebook, and by the way, our Facebook numbers for people viewing just jumped to 327, so they have just managed to beat out the IG people, but our, um, we again, I don't even know sometimes how to really explain this to you, but you know, we get a lot of information. People are always sending us information, and over the two and a half years that I've been doing this, I now know how to filter information. I know which sources are reliable for certain things, which sources are not so reliable. Um, some people, when they give you details, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Some people will have the gist of it, like the overall gist, and then some people will have details. And you kind of get to decipher basically based on how you receive the information, who it's from. There's a number of different factors that we look for, but Ultimately, um, there are things that we take into consideration whether or not we're actually going to believe some information that we've received. And not every information is credible. We, we know that. You know, people gossip, people talk. But, you know, our motto here at Cayman Mall Road, and you might see it on the website, uh, is an old Caymanian saying, if it don't go so, it go close to so. So, in other words, it might not be exactly those details in exactly that situation, but it's not going to be that far off, right? And that's important to understand because at the end of the day, um, people will find a way, and this is what I do find very amazing about governments and governments who try to suppress information, don't communicate with people on a regular basis. They don't get that the people just want the cold hard truth. They just want the information. And if you're not giving them the information, they will take it in any way that they can. And unfortunately, Cayman Mall Road has filled a gap where people were feeling like, you know what? We're not getting the information that we need. And so CMR gives it all to you as unfiltered as possible. Do we get it 100% right every single time? We absolutely know that we don't. We said, listen, we're 97% accurate. And when you understand the concept of Mall Road, hopefully you get and, and understand exactly what that means, right? So 
So there was a rumor circulating on March the 2nd about this particular patient. We heard the rumors, we waited. So we didn't put it up right away like what people think. We waited a little bit. And then I started to get from very reliable sources, hey, today's Saturday and Health City staff are coming in, buying masks from us, buying disinfectants, buying gloves, buying this, buying that, you know? And when those types of sources start to come forward and acknowledge de detailed information like that, then you start to think, okay, what's going on here? Like, you know, what is it really? So um, we posted on our social media page that there was a rumor, and I'm actually gonna pull this post up on the Facebook feed. Um, for those of you who are in IG, I know that we shared it on March the 2nd, but essentially we said, listen, there is, I'm just trying to read it. Um, an Italian man has come into Cayman via cruise ship. And the, the, the rumor is that he is in quarantine as a suspected um, coronavirus infection. You know, they're taking precautionary measures. This is going to be checked out further, so on and so forth. Within, I don't even know if it was an hour of us posting that, you guys will remember, Health City responded and they issued a press statement. And again, that statement is on our website. You guys can go and Google it and have a look. And they basically said, that isn't true. We don't have anyone at our facility that's in quarantine. And we do not have anyone that we are treating as a suspected case of the coronavirus. And we literally said in that post from March the 2nd at 8.45 a.m. Now, what day of the week was March the 2nd? Um, that was a Monday. So we'd been hearing these rumors from over the weekend. And we literally said, pun the mall road. So that means like it's out there. People are talking about it. People are engaging in conversation. An Italian man who came into Cayman via cruise ship on Friday when ships were docked at spots is now in quarantine at Health City as a suspected case of the coronavirus. No official confirmation on this as yet, but we do know that an ambulance was there taking a male passenger away. CMR will continue digging on this one, folks. Meanwhile, Tampa now has two cases. So that was the original post at 8. 48 or 846, sorry, in the morning. And then by, um, let me tell you what time the Health City one went up. It didn't take them long actually to respond. Um, Health City denies coronavirus rumors. And of course, listen, they, they send um, a press release. We're gonna put it out there. We're gonna share that with people because again, that's an official release from them. So that came out roughly, I'm just gonna have a look here at my notes of when it was published on the website. But I do recall it was very quick succession. So that came out, we actually published it at 11.42 a.m. So basically between 8.40, six or whatever, and 11.42, that's what, three hours, um, they had a response drafted. We posted their response. We made mention of the fact that um, not only was this a rumor, and I, I wanna be very, very clear about something here. We have um, sources that are at the very top echelon of the Cayman Islands government, politically and otherwise. So, you know, everyone gets a sense that the government may or may not like us, they may have an issue with us, whatever. But the bottom line is, we know who we can trust and certain people also know that they can trust us. So if I go to someone and I say, listen, can you tell me, there's this rumor circulating, can you tell me if this is true? And in this case, even before we put up the post, 
we said to this person very high, very, very high at the top, who would know? This rumor is going around. Is there any truth to it? They said, don't scare people. You know, he's only there as a precaution. So we, the, the actual exact words is he tested positive for influenza A. Please don't create unnecessary hysteria by using words like suspected coronavirus. That doesn't help anyone. This is what someone at the top said to us on, um, let me just block a few people here because if people are really going to be rude on this, not only will I block individuals tonight, but I'm just gonna turn all the comments off on Instagram. So keep yourselves in check tonight. I really don't have the time for it, okay? So, um, so that was what this person said. And then we went back with another question and said, was he taken to health city? Because again, that was piece of the information that we received. The response came back, said, yes, he was as a precaution tested and found to have the common flu. And then of course the health city statement, which I found peculiar, um, essentially said that they don't have a suspected case there at all. Now, let me say this. The person who gave us this information, it was so reliable. It was like, it would be like me going to the premier himself, Alden McLaughlin, <clears throat> and saying, Alden, is this true? And I'm Alden's BFF, and I expect him to tell me the truth. That's how good my source was. So when my source said, yes, he's at Health City, it's just a precaution, blah, blah, blah. You know, Health City then said, no, that's not the case. Um, he's just here with a heart condition, which I'm sure that's true. I'm not saying that he doesn't have heart issues. Apparently he's had previous heart surgery or whatever. Now here's the interesting thing, right? Even when we had other ships and other, um, you know, Carnival Cruise Lines trying to dock, they would say, oh my gosh, um, this person has been tested. You know, there was one time the premier sent out something, said, no, 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 the person's already been tested for influenza A, so they don't have it. And I thought that that was peculiar because first of all, it doesn't appear that the Carnival Cruise Lines, despite this now going on several months, that they don't have testing strips on board. Because remember, they wanted to come a few days ago to get our testing strips, which I thought was just so bizarre. I'm like, Carnival Cruise Line is a multi-million dollar company. Why don't they have their own testing strips on board? Like, why are they having to dock in the Cayman Islands, send someone off a trip off the ship with a suspected case to only turn around and go back on the ship um, do the test, send, I don't know how they're going to send it again off at the next port, or I don't know exactly what they're planning to do, but I'm thinking, why do that? You know, even if they swab the person and give it back to us, we're like the slowest place in the world to get test results because Jamaica can get test results in like 24 hours and we are taking six days. So to me, that was like really bizarre. Like why would Carnival Cruise Line really want to come here? Why don't they have their own test strips? Right. So the Cayman Islands can't test here. We don't have the equipment. And again, we have been told today at the press conference that that equipment is three to four weeks. We might as well say four weeks out. You know, beds are three to, or a month out. So we won't be able to test anyone locally at least for a month. So it's going to take six days. So I found the whole thing just incredibly weird. If Jamaica can do immediate test results at their facility, why are we not even using the Jamaican lab to send our test strips to? I mean, Jamaica is literally 45 minutes away. You know, you could send a daily flight to Jamaica with one designated health professional, has all of the tests, make Jamaica test it. And then if you want additional confirmation from the center, wherever we're sending it in the States, then, you know, you can do that. Anyway, the same exact patient that we were mentioning that it was denied, 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 
it turns out, lo and behold, this person does have the coronavirus. So here's what we know. His wife was also on the, um, on the ship. So his wife has been here. We don't know. I see someone mentioning Ruth. You're watching from Nicaragua. Thank you so much. I see someone um, ask the question about, you know, like what protocols were taken in transit. We don't seem to have a lot of information about that, to be honest, in terms of, um, you know, was it a government ambulance? Was it private ambulance? How did they get him there? What about all the EMT staff? Like who came in contact um, with him during that time? How closely has the wife been in contact with him? You know, has she been quarantined during this time as well? After he was placed in quarantine, what about the physicians that were working with him at Health City? Like there's a lot of questions and people, rightfully so, really want a lot of detailed information. Isoline, I think that's how you pronounce your name, is watching from Canada. Thank you so much. So um, Ingrid, I hope that answers your question. He was actually a patient at Health City. So yeah, so we don't know how well the wife has been quarantined. I mean, obviously it's like a legitimate question because at the end of the day, she would have been the closest person in contact with him. So we know that the coronavirus, this particular version of the coronavirus um, is transmitted through the droplets. So in other words, you know, if you sneeze and it lands on a surface, and you touch that surface or it's on your hands and you touch other people. So one of the best ways to try to curtail this is a lot of simple things of washing your hands, keeping people kind of at arm's length in terms of, you know, don't get too much into their personal space. Um, don't sneeze all over the place. You know, if you have to sneeze, sneeze into something, you know, those types of things. So this virus has some specific markers that are a little bit different than some other types of the flu and stuff as well. Now, you know what is an amazingly interesting thing, which I had been questioning from when the premier was saying there's another ship, the one that we turned away. And he was like, no, the person doesn't have it because they have been, they tested positive for influenza A. And I said to a medical friend of mine, and I've only asked one medical professional, so please don't quote me on this, but I did, you know, I hope, He's a medical professional and he, he actually works in a lab as well. He's a doctor and he's like works in the lab. And I said to him, um, is it possible for someone to have both influenza A and the coronavirus? Like, I don't know if you just have influenza A, does that mean you can't have any other type of flu virus? And he said, no, you can so I thought about that for a split second. I said, well, the thing then that has puzzled me is why is that any measure of comfort? Why would you test someone for influenza A and automatically say to the public, oh, don't worry about it. This person is fine. They've tested for influenza A and we're good. Uh, if you can have influenza A and COVID-19. You see what I'm saying? So um, Sherry Ann Smith, I want to just play a voice note that someone sent from Sherry Ann earlier this afternoon. I just got it at six, um, a little bit after six o'clock, it was sent to me. Um, now, I know that Sherry Ann sent out a voice note yesterday that apparently went viral. Like when I say viral, I mean, I got the voice note like 20 million times. An exaggeration, probably 20 times. But it circulated around Cayman a lot. And um, her and I were having a discussion when we turned that cruise ship away because, again, I said to her, you know, she's in this prospect group because she lives in prospect. So she's in Alden's chat group. And she said, oh, but the premier is saying that that guy in the ship, like we're turning people away for no reason because um, that guy on the ship is... Um, 
is has tested positive for influenza um, A. And I said, mm, I'm kind of suspicious about that because I don't, at that point, I'm like, I don't know, you know, um, I don't know if, you know, exclusively you can only have one type of influenza at one time or what the situation is. So, you know, I had a lot of questions. I know the premier got very defensive and listen, Alden and I are not personal friends. I'm not going to call him up. I do have his number, but you know, I'm not going to call him up. He's not my drinking buddy, but you know, I don't hate the man. He's the premier of the country. He's got 12 more months as premier. He'll never be premier again because there's a term limit on that. He may not even get back in after this next 12 years. And I may speak politically about a lot of things that the premier does that I may not like and I may not agree with. And he's not necessarily my cup of tea, just like I'm sure I'm not his cup of tea. You know, but that doesn't mean that there's like any hatred there or that he doesn't say something. I can't go, OK, well, what he's saying makes sense. And I'm going to give this some some credit, some credence, you know, that type of thing. But at the same time, just because he is the premier of this country doesn't mean that I have to dovetail to him or that I think he's always right or that I can't question him. Every Caymanian has that right. So I found the comments a bit suspicious at the time. They weren't really making logical sense to me. You know, I was asking additional questions and unfortunately, I don't know if it was how it was being relayed to him or just the mere fact that I was even asking the questions you know, he was getting offended by, by that process. So I thought, let me back off. Life is ironic in so many different ways. And sometimes life has a way of proving us wrong and humbling us. And other times life has a way of proving us right and vindicating us. And we've all been probably in both of those situations. And it's just part of life, the good and the bad. And you just take it and you keep going. Helen, thank you so much for tuning in. Gina says, the people have a right to know. By law, we have the right. Well, you know, we, we believe in freedom of information. We believe that people have a right. That's why we put out probably 95% of what we get. Even sometimes when we say, you know, we're not 100% sure about this, but we've gotten this information, take it with a grain of salt, but this is what's out there on the streets. So <clears throat> we get and understand that when people don't have the information, especially from official sources, or even sometimes when you're trying to, sorry, my nose is itching. I swear I do not have coronavirus. I just got like an itch right in the ring of my nose there. But, um, you know, when, when you tell people, okay, I'm gonna give you information on my terms. So I want you to go to just these sources and I'm only gonna do it through GIS or radio command, which is government owned, people automatically get suspicious. I mean, as human beings, we love a conspiracy theory. That's just our nature. And I, I am not a conspiracy theory kind of person. I gotta be honest with you. I'm like, when I see certain things, I'm like, mm, let me investigate this a little bit more. And people might find that kind of weird or, well, you're doing Cayman Mall Road, but listen, 97% of what you see in Cayman Mall Road is 100% accurate. And it's that 3% like, ah, we don't really know. We might stick it out there to see what else is going to stick to it. But when you hide information from the public, you're creating an environment that is ripe for misinformation and ripe for people digging stuff from all over the place. And that's what people will do. And people will get into the fear mongering, get into the gossip, and then you can't dictate to people, well, we're only going to provide official information through these channels and we're going to exclude other people or we're not going to invite all media to press conferences. Like none of that makes any sense. 
You know, the second we go live for a press conference or a press event, we'll have two, three. Today we had over 422 people tuned in to our live stream event of that press conference. People want to know and they want to get the information. So if Cayman Ma Road has over 33,000 followers, that's quite a substantial number. Why not tap into that and make sure that we're getting to the correct information that then we can disseminate to all of you. So whenever we get government press releases, we put the information out there. We don't hold anything back. If government says X, Y, Z, whether we believe it or not, we're gonna give it to you. And it's up to you to then decipher how much of that you're gonna take in or not. And that's how the process should work because listen, <clears throat> the truth of the matter is media is the fourth arm of government in the sense that we play an important role in keeping them accountable and keeping the public informed. Let me ask you guys a question. How many of you know that a Clifton Hunter student carried some type of a gun. Now, I don't know yet if it's an actual firearm, if it's um, a gun for culling iguanas, if it's an imitation firearm, but they took their parents' firearm to school to scare somebody yesterday. How many of you guys know that? Okay, somebody raised their hand. Anybody else knew that? We haven't heard a single thing. The police haven't said they had to attend Clifton Hunter because, you know, this incident happened. Nothing. So when I put that information out there, we haven't even written the story yet. But when I tell you that this is a real thing and it, it happened, you're like, what? I, I get that sometimes you must think that Cayman Mall Road is really making shit up. Because how does this happen in the Cayman Islands? and nobody else knows anything about it, and nobody else is reporting about it. But yet we have received it and gotten the information from multiple sources. So we know an incident happened. We might not have all of the details, but when we write to the officials, like, you know, they're like, oh, well, you don't ask us for, for any feedback. You know, you're not telling us what's going on and did it. I'm like, okay. So protocol says, you know, as media, this is what you're supposed to do. You write them, number one, 90% don't respond. The other 10% respond two, three weeks later. The story is no longer relevant. So it's like, why are we taking your, your protocol of how your relationship should work with the media? So that's why a lot of you know these government officials think, oh, we're a little bit rogue, we're on the fringes. Yes, we're rogue because we know what's happening in this community and we know the information that is not being put out there to assist the people with the truth. And it, it's really simple from our perspective. We just want to keep the people informed. It's not about fear mongering. It's not about, you know, peddling and gossip. It's about giving you the information as unfiltered as possible. You can make your determination from there. All right, let me read some of your comments. Thomas says, who the heck would go on one of those giant floating Petri dishes referring to cruise ships? Well, like we said on Tuesday, um, over the weekend, the U.S. Department of, um, I always forget what they're, what they're called, but between the CDC and the Travel Advisory Department, um, they have basically said <clears throat> that Americans, because they're concerned about their citizens, <clears throat> should cancel any cruise ship travel, U.S. State Department, sorry, cancel your travel plans if you're going on a cruise ship. And Thomas, that's exactly why. Cruise ships are high risk. Last night, the President of the United States had a press conference addressed to the nation, and he has now implemented a 30-day ban on travel to Europe. Goods can still come in apparently, but human beings cannot, except for the UK, I should say. Now, the interesting thing about that 
is because Italy has exploded with this virus. Italy has been outside of China. Italy now has the most recorded deaths. And in a 24 hour period of time, they had a 30% increase in the number of people who died. And I think it was something like 200 people or something crazy. So Italians, this man's Italian, they are super high risk at the moment. It just is what it is. Ireland is gonna be locking down from 6 p.m. tonight because again, they're trying to contain it. So th these countries are saying, listen, and they're way bigger than the Cayman Islands. They have a lot larger population size and they are saying, we are shutting down our borders, nobody in, nobody out kind of thing because everyone right now is trying to contain this as much as possible. Schools are closing. So Jamaica has closed their schools for a two week period. I see a lot of you on Instagram are inquiring if schools are closing. Here in the Cayman Islands, nothing is closing yet. Nothing. So no schools, no businesses, nothing. Cabinet will be having a meeting tomorrow. The only thing that they've canceled is the inter-primary track and field championships that were to be held tomorrow because that's the largest event that's planned probably in the next, I guess, foreseeable future other than maybe carnival. So um, that was canceled. The premier did say in his address at the press conference that that was something like 4,000 people between the children, the teachers, the, um, you know, whatever staff that they need for the event, about 4,000 people would have been in one area tomorrow. And it's too much of a risk, especially since it involves the primary school, both private and public school students. So they asked it, that's not gonna happen. There was supposed to be a meeting this evening, a Baden town meeting about the coronavirus, that has been canceled, which I don't know why that had to be canceled to be honest. I mean, the people wanna talk to their elected officials. So to me, I would have upped the meeting schedule and be going to every single district Start with Baden Town tonight. You know, they did on Monday or Tuesday, they did um, Mary Miller Hall. You know, I would have been scheduling meetings every night this week to try to alleviate the concerns of the public. So for now, restaurants and other services um, in Ireland will remain open. Outdoor gatherings at more than 100 persons are canceled. Italy. All shops except for pharmacies and food outlets will be closed because again, they had a 31% jump in the number of persons in 24 hours that have died of this virus and people who are in intensive care units have been told to stop treating the elderly. To me, that just sounds so crazy. I'm like, how do you just stop treating? But I mean, logically, the brain understands, I guess maybe they have limited resources, but are things that bad in Italy? And what, old people have no value? They're on the way out? Like, I don't get that. Cuba now has its fourth confirmed case. We know Jamaica has two confirmed cases. Honduras has two confirmed cases. And the breaking news today, Cayman has its first. All right, let's just see um, some of the comments on here. Um, Monique says watching, was watching an IG. I'm just gonna stay here. Yes, Monique, if you have the choice between IG and Facebook, to be honest, Facebook is a better experience. <laughs> um, Sandra says, and we're so rich why don't we have a test right away? Unacceptable. We're not living in China. Oh, well, the Chinese are actually more prepared than we are. Keep on going. Came on my road. Liz is tuned in from Marriott Island, Florida. Salt and peppers tuned in. Um, Tamara, good evening. Jessica, when are the schools going to close down? Like Jamaica and everywhere, the schools are closed down. So no schools closing yet. But here's the thing, Jessica, right? Th this is why closing schools has a real trickle down effect. Because the second you close schools, then businesses have to start shutting down. Because a lot of parents, 
may not have the option of having a helper that they didn't have before. And it's not like you can call Jamaica now or the Philippines and say, oh, come, I need, you know, help or right this second because people are kind of staying put and not necessarily traveling. So that means that what's going to happen is, is government going to shut down or the people going to shut down and stop making money? Like definitely health and safety first, but you also have to strike a balance. And this, I do appreciate, I think the government gets this, that you have to strike a balance between what is realistically happening, happening in your jurisdiction, containing it as much as possible, but also being mindful of shutting down your entire economy. They made mention of the fact that the cruise ships, for example, already starting to cancel a bunch of trips. And what does that mean for the 6,000 persons that work in the cruise industry? And the premier took a little jab at people like Johan Moxham and said, well, you know, there are people who believe that our cruise industry isn't all that valuable and blah, blah, blah but we've got 6,000 persons employed. And yes, we do have 6,000 persons directly employed that rely on that money to pay their bills and to feed their families. And the truth of the matter is, most of us do not have enough reserves, and this says a lot about us and people in general, we don't have enough reserves to stay home for a month and not work. Most companies don't have enough reserves to have you employed for a month, not working and still pay you. However, this is now where you need to get a little bit more creative. So if you do own a company, most of your staff are sitting there doing work on computers. You know, if you're Maples and Calder and you've got 300 lawyers plus support staff, that's probably five, 600 employees in one building. That's a lot of people. How many of those persons can stay home and can work remotely and can work from home? Do you need every single one of those bodies physically in an office? So businesses, companies locally need to get creative. If you don't need your staff coming in to close contact with each other, give them the ability to kind of self isolate a bit, a little bit stay at home, work from home, work remotely. Most of us know how to do remote access from our PCs into our work computers. We have laptops and so on. Johan says, how are people supposed to trust? Uh oh, wait, that disappeared, hold on. Right, so how are people, um, nope, nope, where did that question go? Oh, I'm sorry, I think I've lost that one. Um, okay, sorry, Johan, that one kind of, some of the messages disappear once they go up. Um, this one says, watching from the UK, universities are debating to close and do classes remotely. Some have last session today in advance, same for schools and primary. So I do know that some of our students are already coming back home. Uh, one parent today was telling me that she was picking up her daughter back from the UK. So some of them were having like midterm break, Easter break is coming up. So they were starting to, um, to break anyway. And, um, you know, some of, you know, a lot of our students are coming back and these are Caymanians. We can't say to our Caymanian students, well, you can't come back home. You have to stay put, you have to stay where you are. And they could very well be carrying the virus. Now keep in mind, that um, at the end of the day, um, our, sorry, I just see government sending the press release about the, <laughs> they just sent the press release about the press conference earlier today. Um, right, so a lot, there's that 14 day period of time where you could have it and not be showing any symptoms at all but still infecting other people. Loretta, everyone that has bookings for traveling, first thing they ask if the airlines are flying or we're canceling flights and ask if the Cayman Islands still doesn't have the coronavirus. It's like they're running from it to come here once we allow them to come. Johan says, does the National Security Council have a plan? Um, 
Will the premier's office and cabinet order the necessary steps to lock down Cayman's ports of entry and borders? I understand the balance that must be struck, but public health concerns are now the priority. So what they said today at the meeting is basically that they're meeting, they're having an extraordinary cabinet meeting tomorrow. Um, they do have a plan and they are going to be um, implementing that plan as soon as possible. So they haven't said that there, I don't think a decision, a firm decision has been made to um, lock anything down as yet, but it is part of um, their, their discussions. Um, there's something else I do wanna share with you guys that has been circulating as well that isn't accurate. So let me just, um, I do want to send this because somebody is trolling. I don't know if it's, I'm going to show it to you guys and then you can make the decision. But there has been, um, oh, let me just think who sent it to me. And again, I've been getting this all afternoon. Um, who sent it to me? Oh God, I've had so many people that would have sent this to me. I'm just trying to remember who else. Um, hmm. Let me just think. I know of one young lady, but I've gotten this multiple times. So this is a WhatsApp message that has been circulating about, um, it's claiming that it's coming from the Compass. So I think, I think the Compass, I don't know if they were hacked or what happened, but there was more than one piece of uh, misinformation that appeared to have been coming directly from them when it isn't. So um, there was an email that was circulating that wasn't coming from them. And then today there was a WhatsApp message that said, I'm gonna put this up on, on Facebook because if you get this message, you have to make sure that you do not click on this. So I'm gonna just add it to the live stream here so Facebook people can see it. But it said, <clears throat> Compass breaking news. And then it had, some text about things shutting down. And um, and then it had a link that you, it wanted you to click that is like some fake link or whatever. <coughs> so again, <clears throat> that's fake. So please, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> do not click on that link. Um, Sherry, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, let me see who else is here. Let me just plug in the power cord in this phone. Sorry, the phone has been hot and heavy today, <clears throat> to be honest. Um, this is scary. I have two children attending there. Thanks for keeping us informed. Rosita, good evening. Leslie says we have a significant elderly population and many of them have compromised immune systems. They're financially challenged. The government needs to get themselves together and serve the people who they are accountable for. <clears throat> um, you know, Leslie, when you talk about people with compromised systems, I do want to acknowledge that there are a lot of people who have MS in our community. I was actually talking to a gentleman yesterday who actually has um Scler scleroderma, I think is how it's pronounced. Forgive me for mispronouncing it wrong. I recently heard about that in November when um, a guy for the AIDS Foundation came in and he's one of the performers and he actually said that he has it. And it's an autoimmune um, disease, just like lupus or MS. <clears throat> I think it's a little bit closer to lupus in terms of what it does to the body. And it does reduce your life expectancy and it impacts like your skin and stuff like that as well. So persons like that who have a, a, you know, a deficiency because of, you know, their body's already fighting something. And sometimes these types of autoimmune diseases, like the way that you fight them is you take um, what they call like suppressant medications, so auto, you know, immune suppressants or whatever. And they actually suppress your body's, because your body is basically trying to kill itself they suppress that, but by suppressing that, they do make you vulnerable to other things. 
So they are very high risk for catching anything, much less something like the coronavirus. <clears throat> Sherry says she mentioned a child carrying a firearm to school to scare someone. Yes. Okay. Um, JC, especially since we don't have a national news service. Well, technically the government says you do JC, you have CIG TV that's government ran. So that's a national news service, but they only give you what the government tells them to give you. And that's, you know, they put out what government wants them to put out. So <clears throat> Italy has a three foot rule. That's your personal space. Well, Italy, <clears throat> that three foot rule hasn't helped them much, unfortunately. Um, Trenwick says last minute as usual. Orville, so what about the rumor about a teacher at SciFec? Okay, so Orville, somebody else mentioned this voice note. There was a voice note going around yesterday that a teacher at SciFec had the coronavirus. That voice note was incorrect. So there's a teacher who's in the hospital with respiratory issues. And she, according to our sources, was one of the test results that they were sending out to confirm yay or nay. But now we know that obviously she has tested pop negative, sorry, unless she's number six. But she's been there from the weekend, so I think she would have been in that first batch of five. So no sports day tomorrow, but there is school tomorrow. Um, came out events over the weekend. I haven't heard of any cancellations other than the sports day, which was obviously um, government. So that's the only thing that I've heard. Uh, someone's asking about the Irish jog next week. It might be too early to plan that far ahead. There is the Burger King, the BK fish, fishing tournament <clears throat> this weekend. So to the best of my knowledge, that's a go. You know, those guys are going to be out in their boats. We're actually going to be covering that. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Um, someone mentioned that Ski Spain, sorry, has canceled schools. George says, why not cancel the cruise ships to protect the people? So Trinidad also has their first case as well. So I heard that earlier today. Guyana has their first case. So remember, listen, for weeks now, I've been telling you guys, this really isn't a question of if we're going to get it. It's a question of when. So now it's here. <clears throat> Cora wants to know if the HSA has a ventilator that will be needed due to the fact that it impacts one's ability to breathe. Well, I'm sure as a hospital, I think a ventilator is just run-of-the-mill hospital equipment. Um, the problem with the HSA is they are not considered a quarantine facility. So in other words, they don't have a room that is like, this is a designated quarantine room. They have rooms like treatment rooms that they can try and put you in. But when you're trying to quarantine someone, there's certain things that you need in place to truly be a quarantine facility. And that's why the gentleman was taken to Health City because it is my understanding that Health City does have the capacity to be you know, a quarantine facility in the sense that they must have some rooms that are completely shut off for that purpose. <clears throat> um, Rosita says, I was told that school would be closed on the 23rd. That, that has not been, that's incorrect. So I think that's in that fake email that we were just mentioning that's going around. <clears throat> that is not true. The government has not made a decision to close any schools. And think about it, like rumors like that, why would government wait two more weeks they give you two weeks notice and say, oh, we're going to close school in the 23rd. No, if they're going to close schools, they would be doing it now. They're not waiting until the 23rd. They're not going to give you two, three weeks notice for this to spread even more to then go, okay, now we're going to, you know, you wouldn't get that much of an advance notice, I don't believe. <clears throat> um, Leslie says that CIG should try to work out something with Jamaica for testing purposes. Rachel said there's some jobs that can be done from home with our technology. Absolutely. A lot of people have had questions about insurance coverage, like, you know, is insurance companies going to be covering them if they get the coronavirus? Well, insurance company can't deny you coverage. 
just because you get the coronavirus. It's like the flu. So if you go to the doctor normally for flu, it's a regular flu visit. Um, there are people who have mild cases of uh, the coronavirus. So they're not gonna have all these respiratory issues. <clears throat> and so they will get treated, you know, relatively mildly. Um, there's not a whole lot that you can do right now. But um, at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. So the compass has says that this WhatsApp message that's going around saying breaking news message from them is fake news and it's not accurate. Um, Ali says, what can the government, why can the government not help and support the local community? It's one of the richest islands in the world. Let the foreign companies look after their own employees, but let Kiman government support local people. Well, they did say at the press conference that they are going to be talking to businesses, encouraging businesses to do certain things. They didn't say that they would directly be, you know, but they're going to try to talk to the banks in the event that they need to, you know, advocate for banks working with people on mortgage payments or whatever the case may be at this particular time. So they're operating more in a supportive, like a secondary supportive role, working with the business community, working with the banks, trying to make sure processes are in place um, to protect people. One of the big concerns that we've seen already is the fact that price gouging appears to be happening. <clears throat> and this is a real possibility. And in fact, I did um, confirm yesterday because one person thought that a particular business was price gouging, but I contacted the business owner and she sent me the evidence to prove that that wasn't the case, that the same price that they're charging now for the wipes or the case of wipes or whatever is the same price that they were charging back in January before all of this started. So I think that person was just mistaken, but I have heard of Lysol prices. Someone said to me earlier today that a can of Lysol, which was normally $5 and change is now $7 and change. Now, some of that cost could be due to the fact that in the US our suppliers they're going up in the price. So of course our local suppliers might be increasing the price, but then I'm thinking surely they would have had this supply of Lysol stocked in their warehouses already. So this isn't a new order that's coming in. So I really hope that none of our grocery stores or businesses are attempting to price gouge because um, that would be really wrong. So someone on Instagram wants to know if wipes are out. Yes. I actually got a message from someone who is away. They are in the States. And let me tell you what they actually said to me. Um, they sent me a message. Let me just see if I can find it. Right. So they said, um, hey, Sandy, sorry, I've been off island um, with so-and-so. You can't find shit up here at all. <laughs> when I say nothing, I mean nothing. No alcohol, no Lysol, no hand sanitizer, nothing at all. Not even, not even cough medicine or vitamin C. I'm losing my effing minutes, or I think that meant to be mine. As you, as he, this person got discharged in the hospital. And of course they're concerned because now they have to stay in a hotel and they're stressed out about catching anything because this person was having medical treatment done. And of course they're in a compromised position. Um, and then they said, this is going to cause a bad, bad trickle effect for the cruise industry. Trust me on that. I'm sorry. It's our head, blah, blah, blah. And then Broward County now has four confirmed cases. Um, Isha England, you've got a book here of a comment and I'm afraid that I cannot read all of that. Facebook isn't designed for comments quite that long. Um, Ali says, correct to Lisa. Yep, you don't have to show signs to be infected. Um, Trenrick wants to know if anyone in the BA flight got checked because of course the two cases in Jamaica we know were people traveling back from the UK. Apparently one lady, um, I think she came back to Jamaica for a 
funeral or something because I got photos even from Jamaica like we're getting all the news from all over and um she was at a funeral hugging people and crying and whatever before she then went in the day after to say oh I'm not feeling well let's get tested and sure enough she was the first case of the coronavirus so anybody who's at that funeral or any of her family members might want to get checked out <clears throat> Um, I did see that Kim and Ray's sent out a press statement. I haven't had a um, chance to look at that yet, but of course they had previously said that anyone who was having to change their um, flight schedule because of the coronavirus, they'd be waiving change fees. So get on it folks. Our national airline is working with us. Um, there was actually someone else sent me something from Caribbean airlines there was someone who it turns out was actually in one of their flights. <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> my sinuses, trust me. Um, this person was on a, on a Caribbean airline flight, so they sent out something to basically say that they're aware now that an infected person was on one of their flights. Um, that was the BW526 flight from um, Japan to Guyana. So, um, they have um, advised that they're monitoring that situation and probably anyone who was on that flight should get tested. Shannon is here. Lisa, thank you so much. It's scleroderma. Yes, I think it's a little bit of a challenging scleroderma. Um, <clears throat> so Loretta says still in operation until further notified with government. Orville, thank you for tuning in. Um, JC says, <clears throat> Sorry, COVID-19, um, her cough doesn't even sound cold related. It's not. I actually have, and I do it all the time. Like if you guys ever watch my show, like I'm not even always conscious of the fact that I'm like clearing my throat, but I have had it checked out by professionals and they don't think it's anything serious, but um, a little bit of like, I just get a little congested sometimes. I need to like cut out cheeses out of my diets. I don't try to drink a whole lot of milk anyway. But um, the EMT actually said that it could be related to some medication that I take, which I was a bit surprised by that, like kind of drying out like certain areas and whatever. So I was like, huh, that's interesting. Um, Shannon, we know has a rare lung disease and she says it's called PCD abbreviated. My lung function has me at 23% and I'm very concerned. So again, you know, Shannon would fall into that category of being someone who their immune system is already compromised, lungs are compromised. And so um, that's a big concern. Good question, Mendy. Is Taste of Cayman still happening? We have not heard anything about this. I was actually thinking about that earlier today, and I'm going to reach out to them because they have a PR company that does all of their stuff. But I'm willing to bet that that's going to be canceled. If I was a betting person, I put my money on it that that's going to be canceled. Uh, Helen says that the reason why they don't send it to Jamaica is that they don't want nothing from Jamaica. I don't know about that. Maybe it's some kind of protocol, you know, as a UK territory. But at the end of the day, it seems kind of like in times like this, you work with what you got. Damien, Cuba now has four cases, not three. They jumped from three to four today. <clears throat> All right, so yes, limit your contact. Damien, they got another case. Um, all Italians, it seems like. Shannon, someone said to me that they're not making the virus stop them from going to Florida. So stupid. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think right now if you don't absolutely have to travel, like it's the kind of thing where you want to reduce your risk. Like you don't want to put yourself in any risky situations. Tina wants to know about cancellation of ships. That hasn't been done as yet. <clears throat> um, Trenwick says to go to the beach. That a saline flush is going to help you out. Um, Charlene says, good evening all. Sandra, just got to love you. Doing a great job, girlfriend. Thank you so much. Brian, New World Order has started. Well, a lot of people got theories about that. Paul, 
Tell schools to bring their Easter eggs forward on school can close immediately. The Easter holidays. Oh, sorry. I was like, Easter eggs? Easter holidays. Okay. Um, Lisa, how do we protect high-risk people? The same way I think how you protect the non-high-risk people, <clears throat> washing your hands thoroughly, back and front, in between, in you know, under the nails for at least 20 seconds, warm water, good soap, and... Um, you know, the same way everybody else is trying to protect themselves. Keep your distance from people. Um, Shannon says she's taking out all the stops. So, yeah, folks, we uh, had our first case. So it is what it is. Price gouging is nothing new. Brian, you're right. But I kind of remember <clears throat> Regina saying that she paid $9 from across. What was that for? Lysol? That's crazy. I do remember... Um, after Hurricane Ivan, I'm pretty sure this legislation was passed. Well, I know they talked enough about it, that they were going to put legislation in place that made price gouging an offense. And so maybe it's time like this now, the government has to remind these businesses of that legislation if it was ever implemented. I remember that was, I think, Kurt Tibbetts might have been in power then. Um, to remind them that that's an offense legally, and then, you know, these companies have to remember that we are supporting them all the time. So you price gouges now, and that's just not cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're going to stop supporting you if we know that that's what you're actually doing. Oh, so um, <clears throat> Edith says God is good. Just have faith. Um, Alfia says God knows best, so just let us pray. Well, wash your hands while you're praying. Um, a bit of tongue in cheek, the reporter from the Compass said, you know, should I go to church on Sunday to pray? And Alden told her um, people might not like it, but he would advise staying home, even from church. Shannon says taste of Cayman is a bad idea on a good day. So there you have it. Helen says, drink lots of water. I have the same problem, room temperature water. Yes, it does. And I do try to amp up my water intake, but I can't drink room temperature water. I, I drink cold water. And I think that that makes it worse for sure. But I would never drink water if it was just room temperature water. So ugh, like I drink it really cold with ice. Anyway, folks, um, I think that's all I've got for you this evening. We will keep you informed. Listen, we're here for it. We're bringing you all the breaking news, you know, as it happens. Um, we were at the press conference today. Thankfully, we were able to live stream that event for you. Uh, you can watch it. We do have it on our video companion site. So um, please go and check that out. Someone said to be in the sun for 60 minutes, including old and young people. Listen, be careful who you're taking advice from because um, there's a lot of people out there who are giving misinformation as well. Being in the sun isn't gonna kill this virus and isn't gonna help you. And you probably end up getting skin cancer before you kill the virus. If you're gonna be out there for a whole hour, you might get you know, dehydration and other things as well. So there was a guy in the US who's actually being charged some profit for selling people this miracle elixir that turned out to be completely fake stuff. So everybody's looking to make a buck right now. People are looking to take advantage of other people. Don't let them take advantage of you. Just remain calm. That's the thing right now. We got this. Remain calm. Do what we got to do. Follow the good traditional advice. Hand washing. Stay away from people. You know, all those sorts of things. Um, our government needs to be doing what they need to be doing as well. And um, I would say just let's get on it. NBA has um, suspended uh, the season. So the season has ended for them. Like there's no more season as of last night because one of their players got it. And um, Mark Cuban, who you guys know actually has a, a home in Cayman, has indicated that he's going to pay furlough arena workers 
even though the NBA has been suspended. So obviously they're not working in the arena if there's no games going on and he's going to continue to pay them. So this is what I'm talking about when people really step up to the plate and do what they got to do, they do their part. So Mark is a, you know, he's a millionaire. He can afford it and he wants to help people out because he knows, you know what, a lot of these people might just be making minimum wage in the States. Let's all try to do our part um, to help each other out. And this coronavirus, the biggest thing that this is going to do is test our resolve as people. So we got to keep it together. We got to stick together and look out for each other and do the right thing by, by each other as well as ourselves. Kim says, you rock, Sandy. I receive monthly biological medication for inflammation. Um, sorry, for inflammatory spondylosis. And I was reminded to be vigilant with personal hygiene and keeping a low profile. Shirley says that this could have been avoided. JC says, um, what do you think about the doctor from the Bahamas? He said to drink pine tree oil. I think we can, we call it weeping. I did see that and I haven't actually had a chance to even look into that yet because I do want to check that out. Um, my first instinct is that's probably not believable, but I don't, you know, I don't want to say hundred percent because I don't know hundred percent. Um, Quincy says, increase your intake of garlic, builds the immune system. Um, Nick says the schools need to close. And then somebody else. Um, oh, Damien, include the price gouging law. Thank you so much for that, Damien. I'm going to review that and probably share that with you guys as well. Um, okay. So that, I think, is about it. Stay tuned for, I would say, the latest news as and when it happens. I want to play the voice note from Sherry Ann. She redeemed herself a little bit today after the crazy voice note she sent yesterday that had everybody in a panic um, about the sci teacher. But she did a pretty good job today of um, sharing a voice note with us. So I just want to go ahead. And um, it's only another minute. So I'm going to let you guys um, listen to this voice note. And then we will be ending the show. So please stay safe, folks. And I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate your support. And I appreciate you tuning into the program for sure. You know, I'm going to send out another voice note since they like to send my messages around. This is what's happening in the Cayman Islands. If it wasn't for Mara Road, we wouldn't know what is going on in Cayman many times in many days. Even though they, the government and everyone else tried to light her up and put fire under her. Let me tell you something. I should be proud of another black Caymanian that is intelligent and can call her crazy, local, whatever. But the news, she gets it. And when there's fire, there's something behind it. Something is burning. So I don't need to be credit where it's due. She's a Caymanian black woman trying. And yes, her news hits the fan first. She had over 4,000 odd people following her and listening to the news. I'm not taking that for more road. But I'm just telling you, telling you, when she do put the news out there, there's always something behind it. So you all got to give Mara Road credit for bringing in all these questions and asking what are we going to do. If she doesn't put fire under the government with the news and say, well, this is going to happen and this is who's here and so many people are sick, nothing happens. So thank you, Mara Road. Thank you, Sandra Catron, for the news. We love the news that you have in Cayman. At least we know we keep us informed.